Oh geez, how you guys doing? Did you guys jump the gate or did you just show up or never knocked? That's fine. I'm sure you're wondering how we got on with our tear jet project, which is why I'm sure you guys are here. And uh, you'd like to know how far I got without uh, you guys giving me a hand. This is our tear jet. This is part two of our build. Um, as you can see, we have a fully amphibious buggy. Well, right now it's not really amphibious. It's more like a submersible. Might as well be like a tear gate type thing. Oh, it definitely won't float there now. We have about a half hour worth of welding left over here, but I actually knocked that out of the park. Um, I never showed you guys all the welding because I got about six to eight hours of just pure burning in wire on this thing. So what I'm going to do right now, we'll finish off the welding. I'll take that, uh, the body off, show you, kind of give you a little bit of a walkthrough of what I actually done. So guys, let me just give you a little bit of an update um, on how far I went with this over the past couple of days. So, this here, of course, is the front of your tear jet. This here is your main structure, your main chassis that runs from front to rear. This is your underneath side of your chain case, I guess you would call it, because that's where your chain runs. So, how we tied this together, I actually went on the table, cut some 3 16 thick um, material here. This is our eyelets for our control arms. Um, I then proceeded to come in here and I semi-circled and I slid down over the uh, chassis and I've welded, I've welded. Same with this one in here. And this one in here is actually tied together by this 1-8 plate. So this is all 1-8 thick material here. As you can see to tie this piece to this piece, I actually went ahead and slotted and plug weld is tie those two together. And this one is actually, I was able to weld out stitches, as you can see by our burn marks or heat marks, that, um, yeah, I have everything tied together there. So essentially this skid plate ties everything together. <clears throat> Along with how I've replated the sides here, as you can see, that's all 1-8 material. And I'm even gonna go probably one step further. And I'm just gonna finish this off down here with some little X bracing or something like that. And then that'll give me the option if I feel like this still isn't strong enough to either X brace it or probably put a tube brace in when we flip this thing back over. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The back is gonna be very similar. As you can see, this is the main chassis again. This is what I blew out on the CNC table on the 316 thick. And this has obviously gotta be notched to fit down over and lay on this main structure. I'll then weld this to this. And this one is a quite a bit longer, as you can see. So I may even X brace the front and the back here before I put the 1-8 plate on it. Not really sure. But that's how I'm tying all that together. We essentially have, I want to say, 90% of the tub burnt in. Let me just run it through a little bit here. As you can see, this is 1-8. I may come up here and just brace this up a little bit further, I'm not sure. This is 3 16 tabs that I burnt out. As you can see, they're inside. And all this 1-8 plate ties it all together, so it should be plenty strong. So all that's tied in. Same principle back here, of course. Um, what I actually went ahead and did here, I cut out all the rusty stuff. This is how far I had to go up. And uh, that's all 1-8 plate as well. I think that kind of supports all this, and, you know, if you hit off a stump or something. So I welded this. Now, as you can see right here, I welded the bottom essentially to the side. It was good enough to weld, but it looks kind of weird and wavy because all the heat that went into that 16 gauge on the bottom, and this stuff is like 18. I may come in here with a piece of 1-8 and just uh, bend it in the brake over here and then I uh, just probably played it, probably for a little bit of strength and probably just aesthetic appeal, really. Um, if you come along here to the back, the exact same theory applies with 1.8. This is all 1.8, all tied in. As you can see here, these are our brackets and our other brackets are down there. You can't really see it, but they're tied to this structural chassis piece here. Once again, that's all 1.8, so that's all tied together as well. Now, this piece right here was the factory Factory, factory, factory. 
the exhaust port for the factory engine. So we're gonna come in here with 16 gauge, I believe, and get rid of that so we'll run our exhaust a different way. But this is gonna allow me, as you'll see when we're doing the shafts, to move my engine, uh, not my engine, sorry, my gearbox, over this way a bit further so we get a nice engine right here and give us a bit of clearance and we might be able to do something with the exhaust or something like that. But that's essentially why I'm gonna be just plating this over flat just so I can move that gearbox over. And uh, but yeah, you can kind of see the finished product, how it's all sealed. Now I'm not really gonna say it's all sealed, but it, it's there. Um, maybe we'll run a bilge pump, uh, I'm thinking, that uh, crossed my mind as well. But uh, this is the only spot now that I don't really have welded across because I wanna cut this out and re-weld a nice flat piece in. Probably 16 gauge would be fine up here as well. But as you can see, this is our factory ribs that came from uh, essentially Indiana or wherever this thing was built. But um, what I'm thinking here is that eventually all this steering and these uh, foot controls, I'm probably gonna end up moving up this way just because I'm six foot two and if, I have a seat here and maybe I may have to move the seat ahead just to get some type of engine here that I may have to shove everything up. So this gives me the opportunity to leave this open so I could probably come out here a bit or come out this way and bend it back to get this lip back. And then I may have to put these essentially out here a little bit further. It'll just give me an extra couple inches. But I'm gonna hold off on that because why fab up something if we don't have to? But either way, this is getting cut out because that just looks atrocious there now anyways. I wouldn't wanna weld that. But uh, just a simple cut there, simple cut up there, and a bit of 16 gauge and bend. And that's gonna be it for that. But the tub, essentially, I think we got it burnt in around 90%. I think we're gonna uh, talk about axle shafts and how I kind of went about that. And maybe we can even put the front axle in. I'm thinking we can. Let's talk about our driven axles, our shafts, our CV shafts, how we're gonna get power from our driven shafts out to our CV axles, out to our spindles, out to our tires. This here is actually the factory front driven shaft via the chain and sprocket. As you can see, we have a keyway here. This is actually the sprocket that goes on the front. This is how this axle gets driven. How did I modify them? What I actually came here and did, we shortened them up and we took the six on one PTO splines, which is really popular on farm implements, whether it be a farm tractor driving a potato digger or hay baler or anything of the sorts. There's a whole plethora of implements you can get with uh, PTO splines. I actually transferred these in here a bit further and went with the narrowest possible uh, measurement I could to be able to seal this to the tub and to have something driven out here on the outboard side of things. Now, as you can see, I kind of messed up here because I want to explain a little bit further. These are actually your factory yokes and it's essentially just a U-joint, but as you can see, the inward spline, the female part of this, is actually the PTO spline. So, as you can see, this slips on here. And the reason they done this in the Tearjet is because this is your hub assembly on your front. Now, as you can see, we have one of those yokes inside here, and that's how this shaft used to drive this hub assembly and essentially your wheel bolts there. Pretty simple stuff, but this is how they got away with being able to turn and transfer power. So as you can see, that's factory tear jet stuff. We haven't really changed anything there. But my original plan was to utilize this factory yoke, keep that in place, and then modify my CV axle to accept this either spline or welded or some sort of flanged bolted. I'm, I wasn't really sure, but that was my original idea. And once I gave it some more final thought, I decided that, you know what, this is probably gonna be a little bit of a weak point. I already have the CV axles, so why am I kind of messing with that? The other thing is that if I would've went with this option, I would've had to come in here and modify my CV axle to have a slip joint, because as your car, your truck, your UTV, anything that has CV axles, is going through the range of motion on your suspension travel, whether it be full droop, right to max out on compression. Your axle shafts are actually getting longer and shorter, and that's just to keep everything from binding. As you're at full droop, your axle shaft will be out its max. As you're at probably at center-ish, it'll probably be in its max. So, I think the easiest way for me to do this now is to cut this off, maybe machine it, blow a couple flanges out on the table, weld it to this so I can still have a really, really tight fitting PTO shaft, PTO joint, and then I will be able to essentially blow another flange out, 
weld it to here, modify this inner CV joint, and it'll just all bolt together, and that way I'll be able to utilize this. Now how I messed up is that I had to come in here and drill a hole. Now what I'm actually gonna do here is probably put a split pin or a spring pin or some sort of pin in through here, and that's gonna retain it and keep it from sliding off the shaft like so but if I wouldn't have messed up if I would have really thought about this and never really jumped the gun before machining everything what I could have done I could have left this a little bit probably half inch longer and I could have put a groove in there and put a nice c-clip and that would have retained it and would have kept a little bit more strength in my shaft but hey I messed up and the reason I didn't do that in the beginning anyways is because when I was planning on using this whole setup there's really tight tolerances in here so if I would have came out another essentially eight of an inch, there would have been a binding issue here. So I wasn't able to do that. So this was my original plan, but if I would have thought about it a little bit further, I would have done it a little bit different and I would have just put that C-clip in there. As you can see here, this is your pillow block bearing. I want to call it, I call it a pillow block. I'm not really sure the proper terminology onto it, but your bearing sits here, seal sits here, and this sits on your seal face. And that's actually how you seal water from getting in the tub via around your axle. As you can see here, if we look a little bit closer to our bearing face and our seal face, of course, it's a little bit worse for wear. It's had, you know, 30 years of abuse, probably more. I think it's probably gonna be a build up job in the future and turn it down on the lathe to get all these grooves out of there. But for mock-up purposes, for testing purposes, I think we're gonna be fine for what we're gonna be doing here. So let's just jump over to the milling machine so I can show you what my plan is with the rear shaft. Now, one thing I wanna say is that I'm not a machinist. I'm pretty much not anything. <laughs> Everything that you see here, I'm, I'm usually just winging it and I'm hoping for the best. So what we're actually doing with this um, shaft, this is our rear shaft. I actually shortened this one up as well. This one actually had hub, hubs on the end. And if you watch the previous video, I actually ended up having to cut them off with the bandsaw to get the hubs off the keyway. Um, I couldn't really get them off, so I just cut them off. I was wasting a bunch of time. So what we've done here is the exact same thing and it's gonna be the exact same theory I've done with the front axle. I shortened it up as much as I could and now I'll be able to make those flanges again. Um, this still accepts a six by one PTO flange or a PTO hub rather that I have to modify. And then it'll be the exact same thing. We'll bolt it together. We'll modify the inner CV joint on our rear CV axles. And then that will transfer power out. And once again, you can see right here, this is where our factory seal faces are. We have three on our back shaft and uh, they're a little worse for wear once again, so that's probably another project in the future. What am I doing and why is it set up in the milling machine? Is where our factory gearbox sits. This uh, shaft actually slides in and it's ran via another keyway. The issue I was really nervous of having is that I wouldn't have enough space in the tub for a little bit larger motor. So what I'm actually coming in here to do is to take this driven keyway, which is how they dri drive the, uh, this axle via the gearbox, and I'm actually taking the keyway and I'm elongating it. I'm gonna go over here as far as I can. That would allow me to take my gearbox and shove it over as far as I can, essentially almost next to the tub. So then I will have more space here for my motor and my, C my CVT uh, clutch and whatnot. But while I have you zoomed in here, I'm just gonna explain a couple more things. As you can see here, this key slot is probably about a 3.8, deep key, while well, this one's probably like a quarter. As you can see, this was what actually came out of it. Hopefully you're zoomed in enough to see that. And I don't believe this is an actual keyway because it's quite rusty and it has this line, but this line could actually be a chatter because this is very sloppy in here. So I actually went ahead and bought new key stock, which we probably may have to mill down. It fits in here perfect and it's a nice tight fit. But I'm just thinking if, if this isn't as deep as shoulder as this um, key stock, what I'm gonna have to do is mill this down to accept the gearbox to slide in. But that's a lot tighter than this one, as you can see. And uh, that should stiffen everything up. So what I'm actually gonna do now, guys, we're just gonna mill, mill this slot just a little bit, probably another inch.
So as you can see there, guys, you can see where the old stuff kind of was, and this is how, uh, probably like a couple inches, two, three, four inches, just to, just to slide that keyway essentially over this way a bit, just so I can get that gearbox over this way as far as I can. That's gonna give me a little bit more uh, room to play with, that's all with exhaust routing or something like that. What I had planned for the front, as you can see, I trimmed this down drastically. We removed this, uh, this piece off the end of the pipe. Now this is exactly where the front spindle used to go. As you can see, used to go there, as you can see the mounting points, and that's how it used to turn. So, this is actually used for two things. This is our, once again, our pillow block bearings or whatever these are. And uh, as you can see, that sits inside, so that seals your axle shaft, but this is also a flange face that seals the tub from the outside elements as well. That goes right here, as you can see. Now I do have some clearance issues, of course, which I kind of figured was gonna be the case, but this is essentially where your stub axle is gonna come out. That's how I'm gonna seal, essentially. I'm gonna come in here, clean all this up, and make sure that sits really flush, of course. But um, then was just, I guess, some RTV gasket around there, put it on. Then we can install our front drive axle. But first, we gotta cut that other piece. We're well on our way, guys. As you can see, I came in here and cut this off with a bandsaw. And this is working out exactly like I had planned, believe it or not. Um, I can cut these bolts off a little flusher if I really wanted to. But essentially, it seals there. My grease nipple's gonna be right here. This now will slide in over that perfect. I can get at my pin, hit that down. But we're gonna cut these ears off, make a flange. And the flange is gonna be pretty much dead on right here. That's gonna work out great, but I need to really make sure that uh, I'll leave enough room. I may have to get some type of carriage bolt or something with round head bolts so I don't uh, protrude out and hit these. But once again, I can come in here and cut these off if I want. This seal is backwards. I'm waiting on new seals to come in, but I just put this in for fit up purposes and clearance purposes. We have got a lot accomplished today, I think, anyways, personally. So we have our pillow bearings in here. I think all this is gonna work out very, very well. Um, everything's in gear, everything runs freely, as you can see, which is great. I replaced this bearing here. This has a new keyway, this has a new keyway. Um, all these pillow blocks have new bearings. Um, if you guys know a part number for the seals, I am kind of looking for them. Um, I kind of brought them out to a shop here in town and uh, tried to match them up. They couldn't really do anything for me. So I think we have a lot, a lot accomplished on this. We have the tub 90% welded out. The front drive shaft is in. I don't know why it seems so hard to turn with that little bit. It's actually really free, guys. 
I don't think I'm going to add the four-wheel drive chain right away. I think I'm going to hold off on that. And I don't even know, to be quite honest with you, if I can snake the chain in around that front sprocket that's now buried in here, of course. Now, another thing, as I was tightening these, the weld decided to let go in here, wherever they are. I actually had to weld this bottom one on myself. That one held fine, but the two factory ones let go. So probably going to end up cutting those off when we take this apart again. Now, it's really worse for wear, I must admit, like it looks kind of weird and shabby and, but uh, trust me guys, I don't leave anything like this. So this buggy, if it works out and it's usable, this is getting the full meal deal. So um, it may look a bit rough, but we're in the kind of, the first stage of things. So I think, uh, I think we're on the right path. Like I say, we have quite a bit done. You see in the time lapse, I actually had to beat this shaft in quite a bit. I hate doing that. Um, the brass hammer, the dead blow, nothing was happening, but a little bit of hammer. Now it may have looked worse in the time lapse, but it actually wasn't that bad. So we're gonna have to remove this. Um, as you can see now, I'll come back here. This right here is our gearbox, of course. And now you can see all the room I have here. Um, if I can show you. This is essentially what was in place of it. That might be upside down. But as you can see, we uh, lost quite a bit of space that way. But now I can shove it over that extra four or five inches, perhaps if I need be. Depending on where the motor's gonna sit, that gives me a little bit of a free range. I gotta come in here and re-weld this tab, but I don't know where the motor's gonna sit yet. So that's gonna be in the future video. Um, I am going to do a hydraulic disc conversion on this thing. This head, I don't know if you can really see it up there, but it comes back and it's essentially just a rod and it's like a mechanical brake caliper. And that would be fine. That would probably be fine for this thing in stock form and I'm sure they've worked for years, but uh, the motor I do have for this is uh, quite a bit spicier than what was in it. So um, we got tons of things to do with this thing guys. So I know this looks bad to put it together like this without painting things, but it's probably coming apart again. I have to put a fuel cell here somewhere. I have to put a battery tray. There's motor mounts gotta be made. There's exhaust hangers that's gonna have to be made eventually. And there's no real sense of painting it if I gotta grind it all off again. So we're gonna just kinda mock it all up, probably drive it for a bit like that. And uh, then we'll go to town and make it pretty, I guess you could say. But. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it done on this one. Quit rambling. And uh, if you like this stuff, click and subscribe, it helps out huge. Thanks for tuning in, I uh, really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.